This is the amazing Temple of Man at Luxor in Egypt and I am really grateful to John Anthony West who introduced me to the work of Shwala de Lubix in his film Magical Egypt. Shwala de Lubix was an alchemist and understood the symbolic language of the temple. said that Ra creates netters as his limb. This indicates that the netters are part of the Ka or the body of Ra, the double and the vital energy. Ta gave birth to the nine netters. Ta is found as the heart within the body and the tongue within the mouth of each netter. In Shrala's book on the king, he tells us that the king can wear the netter crown, allowing the netters functional divinity to act and work through the king himself. Each of us also can access this king energy and therefore the netters. Let us have a look at the green man and the god or netters which is Osiris, Ta and Ra Horakati and even Geb the earth god. The green man is one who is in tune with nature and in the tarot we have the fool. An important question here to consider is, do we look outside or inside for these answers? In alchemy they say, as it is above, so below. As it is out there, so look in here for the answers. Ah, the cosmic pan, that natural man within me. The man of nature, loving to garden, be out there in the wilds. Ah yes, and there is that part of me that tends to try and hold up the whole world upon my shoulders. The temple at Luxor is dedicated to the god Neta Amun. Amun is the air and the breath principle. Here we can see Amun and Kunum. Now Kunum is the galactic exhalation and Amun is the inhalation. So let's have a look here at Kunum who's placed in the throat section of the temple but he is also fashioning the physical body as well as the etheric body of the king or Horus is the car and the etheric body but they are the green netters are the shapers recalling here that Kunum, Osiris, Ta and Geb are all green netters Kunum and Ta are potters and shapers so they shape the physical body and here is Osiris and Isis with the Ka and Horus on the potting wheel. Kunum at the throat level therefore indicates that he's using his divine breath and sound to shape and fashion the Ka or the figures of the king, his Ka, his etheric body and his physical body with the sound. The air and the breath element the divine wind, the creative word, an inspirational source, an inspiration and exhalation of the universe. Now I'd like to introduce the idea that the tree is a representative of nature and the etheric body. And here we can see a tree-like structure which is more like the lungs it's a hollow place in which the figures at the bottom, the chief, communicates with a shaman who then walks into the cave of the ancestors, talks to the members of the seven caves or the seven chakras, brings information back out. It's then relayed to the king in various stages of his life, both as a young man and as an old man, when he's given instruction by the other netters. The tree structure is the vital body. Therefore, the king's car is being instructed by the netters of Thoth and Shizet with writing and it's being encoded with a magical language. Here we can see Osiris as a green netter encircling the Duat. I've colored his body circled in green. 
as such. And we live in this world within which Osiris encloses us. You can also see here that Nut stands on the head of Osiris, holding in her hands the sun. Remember that Geb too is a green netter like Osiris and he is an earth god, the representative of the green nature and the nature of man and the man within our nature. Osiris as the wise king in nature is equivalent to the god Pan and also to the forest lord who actually owns and rules over the kingdoms of nature, divas, plants and all that grows within the plant realm or even the etheric plant-like body of our energy field which can totally regenerate. This older, wiser father of nature bids us take off our head and get to know our own nature so that we too may regenerate and heal. <laughs> To me. This older, wise king bids us to know the nature of sacrifice, to be able to disassemble and reassemble or regenerate and heal ourselves by knowing our true nature. These young eyes have seen nothing of the world yet. Shall I snuff out their light? Shall these young lips grow cold before they have tasted life or touched a woman's cheek? This Gawain, a flower of nights, may be in his youth a little immature and need a bit of pruning. No, Gawain. You shall not die yet to defend their lack of courage. I came to challenge a man, not a beardless boy. I give you a year's grace to grow your beard. Twelve sweet, short months of life to do with as you will. But when the seasons have come full circle, we shall meet again, and you shall pay your debt to me. In the original story of Ragnell and Gawain, King Arthur is defeated by a black knight in the forest, and he finds that in his defeat, the black knight accuses him of having given away the forest which wasn't his to give. So Gawain, who is the king's son, King Arthur's son, needs to actually find who owns the forest, which is the goddess Ragnell. The king has a year and a day to find out who does own the forest, and it is Gawain who actually finds out who she is. You're not playing my game, Gawain. was an example of correspondence as a hidden frequency in the language of the temple. There is encoded in the stone the tone or the tonal nature of the temple itself. Instruction with the power of sound we can rebuild and heal ourselves. The human being embodied in the temple is Pharaoh, who is symbolic of human perfection. Demonstrating the highest level of man's development Pharaoh is humankind's divine form. The temple clearly expressed a belief that man and the cosmos were one, and that each was fully represented and intertwined within the other. <laughs> 